Okay, everybody, it is time, but I can't do this alone. We need a drone, and we need a drone operator. That would be Eric Chang. He is the director of aerial imaging at DJI. Eric, let's get this thing started, because we've got about a minute until that drone gets over the edge and into that lava field. In the meantime, my other friend here, Bjorn Odson, is with the National Icelandic uh, the, um, Civil Protection. And you... You're going to help me kind of describe what's happening. So we have the cameras on the drones. We're going to get into that lava field somewhere we're not allowed to go. No, basically not. <laughs> I so mean, it's, it's too dangerous for a human to get in yes, there. Yes, and then all the way into the crater, we have temperature up to uh, 2100 Fahrenheit. Wow. So it's, so it's very hot. 2100 yeah. degrees. And that lava field is the size of Manhattan. Yes, it's 85 square kilometers, but it has been pouring on the area here. And it's, it's going 40 kilometers away from the mother volcano, mm -hmm. underground, and then it comes up here in this crater. And that's what's amazing. And what, while we're doing this, yeah. I just want to show you, we're able to see through Eric's camera what the drones are seeing. So Eric's going to stay really quiet and focused because he's a very responsible yes. drone operator. He has, has a lot of experience in this. Does it excite you that we're going to see parts of science and parts of the world that we've never been able to get this close it, to? It, it's very interesting technique that you can really fly over there yeah. and, and looking into the crater without being there. So, yeah. so it, it, on a safe site, as you can say. Right. And we're learning something all the time. You have cameras that are mounted yeah, yes, all over. Yes, yes, definitely. And so you've we, been studying Iceland's uh, volcanic yes, eruptions. Yes. This is a place, you guys, that... that is always moving. This it's is moving, earth yeah, that's yeah, it's, constantly it's, it's growing. I said it's growing. Yeah. And then in the middle here, where we have the active volcanoes, we have magma and lava coming up and filling up the gaps, as you can see. Eric, how are we doing? Are we getting close? Yeah, we're getting close. All right, yeah. you guys, the moment is almost here. We're going to get up and over that lip. What are we seeing? Can you describe to us here, Bjorn? Yeah, there we see the crater itself here, mm -hmm. uh, that it's in the middle of the lava, and the lava field here surrounds it. Mm -hmm. And, and the, in the beginning, it's a, it's a longer fissure with like a wall of fire, but with time, since Eric came the last time, it has been growing and merging into one crater. Mm. So there's like a, a, a bubbly mud pot where the magma is coming up to the ground, and then it flows with the river out to the field. And we have to stay this far away because the gases are very yes, toxic. Yes, yes, definitely. And we are on the right side, you can see the weather is picking up, yeah. and all, all the gas and toxic is going in the other direction. Bjorn, it's happening right here. Oh my gosh, you can yeah. see it. Look at this. We're just getting inside that crater. So there you see where it's yeah cooking the lava. Oh my and then the lava flows into the to, into the tubes, and that feeds the the whole area of lava. So wow. It, so it grows so time. Eric's got that, that look, and he can get even closer, and we're able to get just the detail that you can see. So again, over 2,100 degrees inside there, and it is bubbling. And at times before this, it was erupting, and you would see a wall of fire. But this yeah. is enough fire for me. I mean, this. Yeah, it does. It does. But in the beginning, it's, it's gas. It, it goes up, and you have a wall of fire with, with several hundred meters of, of, of fire. But it has slowed down the time, but still, it's very active. And you can see the walls here. So you see the steam coming up. Is that what? Uh, that's just heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The steam is both gases or, and also water, which is, which is coming from, from the, the magma itself. Wow. So again, the video you guys are seeing is something that really no one has been able to do live here, being able to get inside a volcanic eruption. And even it's bubbling there, and you can kind of see the river. The, did you just see that? The chunks of ash yeah. falling off the side, and it's constantly changing. Bjorn was telling me the sides of that crater have already, in the last couple of months, since August, when this became very active, it started falling apart and changing shape. George? Yeah, I just want to, what, you know, what can we learn from what the drones are picking up right here? Mm -hmm. so, so George is asking, what can we learn from what the drones are picking up? I mean, if we're able to get this close. What is important here is to monitor the area and see the changes at the time. Mm -hmm. so, so if we take images from drones or other, other equipment, we can compare from time to time. And I know that avi aviation is yes. a huge concern yes, yes. when it comes to these. We know in 2010 that was a big deal. Yeah, that was a big deal. Then we had eruption under the glacier, so it was an ash plume going into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But this is, uh, in, in whole, this is a lava eruption that no ash is emitted. Right now. Yeah, and, right now. And, and right now. But there's always a fear that there could be another ash eruption. And, and then you also were saying that flash flooding could be a problem because you guys, if this lava that you're seeing here is underground, it starts melting all of the glacier. It, it, it so, so, the, so the largest hazard associated with volcanoes in Iceland mm -hmm. is because Icelandic volcanoes is often capped by the glacier. Like we see here, all behind is a glacier, mm -hmm. the largest glacier in Europe. And if eruption starts under, it melts the ice and produces uh, uh, water that can flood. Well, we 
And if it breaks through, we can ask Bloom that that flies over. Now, can we get any closer at all, Eric? Is there any uh, way to yeah. get it? Yeah, we can get a little closer. About how far up are we right now? We are at 120 meters, so uh, like 380 feet, 400 feet. 380 uh, feet over it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But, but you have to also say that this, this lava field here is middle of Iceland. It's far away from... It is. It's far yeah. far away from anyone, yes. so it's not affecting anyone right here. But it, of course, has so many other implications. You guys, this is amazing. Look at that river of lava. I mean, you can see just the detail in there. And again, what we can learn from this, not only in volcanic eruptions, but also I think of this in the way of science, in the way of storms. We've used them in, in part in flooding, when people need to see their homes in wildfires, when they aren't able to get into places. Drones have, in a responsible way, a huge future in science. And Eric, we were talking about the exponential growth of drones, and this alone tells you. I mean, isn't this just a wow moment for you? Yeah, it's, it's changing every few months, and we couldn't have done this just a few months ago. Right. As the, even the imaging, you were saying, is so much more precise than we've been able to see before. Oh, oh you guys, don't you love this? It's unbelievable. It's, it's a, it's, 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 feel I, the heat. I know. Can you feel the heat where you are? I mean, what what is the feeling? Because uh, you're almost a mile <laughs> to it. What, what's the feeling for you, Ginger? Uh, you know, I have to tell you, we're three quarters of a mile away just for safety purposes, and it's lots of cold air, but when we flew right over it, it was hot. Mm -hmm.